Well, if we're all here, we it's it's pretty much nine o'clock on the dot, so we might as well get started. Um, I think we have a a good size agenda here to get through today, so I know everybody's busy. Um, so it's nine o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. And Nancy has me reminding everybody. Uh, we know the drill by now, but just a reminder: we are electronically uh, participating, not able to do this in person. We're streaming live on the council's uh, on page. There will likely be folks watching. Uh, the meeting today or uh, re the recording later on um, and we continue to do virtual meetings until some some such time in the future uh, with board members here uh, Nancy will have taken attendance but just to clarify we have Mayor Bailey Councillor Pierce member Brown and member Verhey in attendance we also have Inspector Nash and Staff Sergeant Hansen welcome and County of Brant staff with Robin Hewitt and Nancy Davis as our recording secretary. Um, is that is that everybody, Nancy? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, great. So let's just jump in and um, let's have an approval of the agenda, please. Mayor Bailey, seconded by Member Brown. All those in favor? Great, thank you. Declaration of pecuniary interests. Any at this time? Seeing none. Thank you. We do not have any delegations, presentations, or, or petitions to deal with today. So we'll go right into item number five, which is the adoption of the minutes from the previous meeting. Everybody's had a chance to review them and look at them. We have a couple here. Uh, we have April 20th, April 27th, and May 11th. Uh, we had we had two special uh, board meetings in between our regular uh, scheduled board meeting. Um, I, if unless there's any amendments or additions, we can do a motion to approve all three at once. Councilor Pierce is putting that motion forward, and Member Verhey seconded. And then all those in favor. Thank you. That's carried. Uh, business arising from the minutes. Uh, I know we have one item and there might be others from, from any discussion, but Member Brown, did you want to start us off with the Brent Towing Group uh, update? If I could, Madam Chair, thank you. Just a quick update. Um, Adam has created a rough draft of the proposed contract. Um, we're going to request Adam to forward this to all board members this week. And we're asking or requesting that if you can uh, review the same and provide any comments or concerns back to Adam within two weeks. Uh, once received, Jen, Adam, and myself will look at all of the input and revise the document appropriately. And then this revised draft will be brought back to the Police Services Board next month for further discussion so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page before we forward same to uh, the Brent Towing Group for their uh, their input. Any questions for Member Brown? Sounds good. Thank you so much for that update. Uh, the work continues. Uh, I think Jim and I have learned more about towing in Brant County than we expected, but uh, it's all good. So, um, any other business arising from the minutes that anybody wants to address? Okay, seeing none, we will move. Ex expeditiously into Inspector Nash's uh, report that's in our package. Um, and I'm sure everybody's had a chance to review. So over to you, Inspector Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'll get right into the detachment commander's report uh, very quickly with regards to human resources, staffing updates. Uh, as you're aware, Detective Constable, Detective Constable Samantha Bergeron has transferred out, has joined the uh, child Sexual Exploitation Unit, effective uh, yesterday. Uh, DAC Tamara Brooks-Wheat has joined the team. Uh, as you're aware, she's a long-standing auxiliary sergeant in the county. Uh, PC Rob Perryman was successful in a competitive process and be joining HSD as a recon in the near future. And as you're aware, I've joined the team here in as the interim detachment commander starting last Monday. Uh, public internal complaints, there's no change. Uh, over to community mobilization. Uh, I'm aware that there were 11 referrals to the COAST program for follow-up during the month. 
Uh, I won't get into some of the other items here. Youth school resource officer, obviously with the shutdown, uh, Sylvie's involved in a lot of online uh, presentations, which are going very well and well received by the uh, the teachers and some of the parents who've been exposed to that information through the virtual forum. For the community services officer, obviously uh, with respect to the stats, that member is also actively engaged in a number of news releases and social media. Uh, there are a number of things that we will discuss going forward about communication strategy uh, in the days ahead and it's something I will be working with uh, Conrad on. With respect to focus patrols, without going into the specific stats, as you can see, we're active in all four focus patrol areas. Uh, I do have available to me now the motor vehicle collision report that was done from last year. It is my intent to review that information and provide a report to the board, uh, ideally at the next meeting. So that is something I work will work on that allow us to confirm and verify these identified focus patrols and inclusive of any new focus patrols or areas that we should focus on. The brand off-road vehicle enforcement initiative is currently ongoing. Uh, again, number of uh, provincial offense notices issued. And as you'll notice, there were a couple criminal code related ch charges with respect to impaired driving. Uh, I can say, and I will get into momentarily some of the impaired driving stats. I think there's a question in a previous meeting with respect to trends across the province. And I can say that impaired driving is up in a number of other locations. Uh, one area is uh, estimated about 20%. So that is a, a trend that's across the province. With respect to detachment code update, uh, no change. We are still in shutdown. Uh, detachment doors are locked and access is by appointment only. So no change there with respect to the additional noteworthy items. We had a quality assurance audit completed on detachment. I'm happy to say that uh, we were praised for our, our streamlined approach to the property and our results were quite favorable. So that's a positive. Training for two ICs, as, as you're aware, uh, members continue to receive training uh, in various capacities. One of the things we identified as a need for our two ICs to receive very focused specific training on areas of interest, uh, things that they may not be exposed to or may have limited exposure. And we're trying to improve their ability on the front line to perform their role. Uh, human trafficking unit, as you should be aware, we welcome members of that unit be working at a Brant County office in the near future. We're just waiting for a date. Uh, as far as noteworthy events and the incidents, I will not uh, I will not review those. I can say that uh, in general, a number of good things are happening across the county. Uh, I've had a chance to review all of these items. Obviously, a number of stunt drives, so that's that's an ongoing concern. Our community street crime unit continue to do uh, great work across the county, and I know that will continue. Uh, into the summer and going forward. So I will not get into anything specific. Of course, is there any questions afterwards? I welcome those. I will speak to some of the trends and actions, however, which highlight the specific statistics report. Um, I can say that provincial offense notices or charges uh, for the month of February, obviously we're behind in this area, are down uh, about 49.4% year to date 46.1%. Uh, this is something that I will have to look into further. Uh, obviously, COVID has an impact, but I don't want to weigh it all on that. It's something I'll look at because I do see a uh, number of charges being laid. Violent crimes and drunk crimes are up year to date compared to 2020, but still down compared to 2019. I can say that with COVID, uh, that certainly had an impact on our statistics for last year, and that is something... I want to go back at least for the last three years to be able to baseline what that should look like and be able to provide uh, a better picture going forward. Uh, I'm happy to say property crime is down 26.7% year to date. Um, motor vehicle collisions down overall compared to 2020, 6.1%. 6, 6 uh, vehicle related property crimes have de decreased significantly. Uh, I suspect that has a lot to do with people working from home and more people being around. Mental health calls, on the other hand, have increased 21.4%. That's concerning. Uh, that is something we continue to look at uh, with our 
healthcare workers on board. They're certainly providing uh, a lot of help in this area. 911 calls have increased 52.4% uh, compared to uh, April and year to date are up compared to 2020. Uh, that is also a concern. Alarm calls have decreased and domestic disturbance calls have decreased over last month, but year to date are still up uh, 26 point. Uh, 26% compared to 2020. For patrol hours, uh, we had a slight increase in patrol hours at 1,052 total hours compared to the previous month. Uh, fit pat foot patrol hours have increased significantly over uh, last month with 219 hours compared to 88. So that is a positive. Uh, foot patrol and cruiser patrol hours year to date are down compared to 2020. So I will not get into, I've, I've highlighted the statistics report. So subject to any questions that concludes the detachment commander's report at this time. Um, I would certainly like to uh, give a public thank you to Inspector Lisa Darling, who sat in for a number of weeks and supported the members here in the county at large. So a uh, thank you to her. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Inspector Nash will echo your thanks as well. Uh, we did send a little note of appreciation to her when uh, on her last day. I'm sure, I'm sure all the members appreciated her her intern leadership, and it was also good for us as a police service board to have a a different um, view on every. Everybody has a different leadership style, so it was very interesting for us too to see the uh, opportunities. Um, just really quickly before we get into some questions, would you mind, Sergeant Nash? Or, Dr. Nash, excuse me. Um, some of the acronyms I'm not as familiar with, and if you come to my industry and we use a lot of acronyms, you wouldn't know what they are either. Um, ICS, NCD, um, I mean, I, I think I know most of them, but what are they? Yeah, my apology. So uh, we'll go one at a time. Which one, are you, which one can I start with? ICS, sir. Or is it the training? that you guys did uh, for, and then maybe I have the acronym wrong. I'm just trying to find it in my file here. Um, Sergeant Hampson did some training. Yeah, the two ICs. The ICs, thank you. Yeah, so that's second in command. So in a case where you've got a Sergeant in charge of a platoon, you'll have a two IC that will provide that uh, supervisory support and in the absence of the sergeant the 2IC will provide that that leadership management to the platoon during their shift and so just thank you very much that makes 2IC I get it now totally makes sense um, HSD that is the highway safety division thank you anybody else have some I mean some of you are very familiar with these I apologize so if anybody else has any chip in now Okay, I sat there reading this last night and you think for the life of me, I could figure out what those are, but now that you say them, they seem really simple. So I feel kind of dumb now for asking, but thank you for clarifying that. Um, let's open this up for some questions on the report and the uh, information that uh, Inspector Nash has included in, in his attachment commander's report. Mayor Bailey? No, I just want to say uh, through you, Madam Chair, that I find the, the, um, the format of the report easy and uh, and just enough information. I, I, I thank you for cutting it in half. It's no longer a book, but it is pointed and it's easy to read. So thank you. Agreed. Uh, Member Brown? Through you to Inspector Nash, thank you very much for the, the direct report. It was much appreciated. And uh, I'm really happy to see that you're being proactive and uh, Staff Hampson is again leading the Brandt Off-Road Vehicle Enforcement Initiative. I've had several conversations over the last few months with a few farmers and uh, a counselor. One of the greatest concerns about the ATV issues that it became, uh, it continues to be a very serious ongoing problem. He related that there are people on ATVs tearing up the fields as he continues to plow and plant it. So there's absolutely no regard for the farmers uh, whatsoever. Um, he further noted that a lady had written a letter to the Brantford Expositor who was complaining about ATVs in the city and recommended that they go out to the country to play. 
He takes exception to this as the ATVs in the country means destruction of trails, farmers' fields, crops, and a loss of income. I asked him if he had reported these concerns to the OPP, which he had not. I advised him that it's very hard for the OPP to respond to a problem if they don't know that there is an ongoing problem or where, or where it is, and suggest that he do so. He raised the same issues that we raised a year and a half ago, that he is concerned, um, as many other farmers are, that complaints may result in retribution to his crops or equipment if he calls the OPP. I suggested that he still needed to call the OPP and raise the concern and advise them of these concerns uh, and that he would like to remain anonymous. I said, but the OPP need to be aware of what's going on. The last time this was raised, Sergeant Hampson led a team that conducted patrols in many areas of the county, which received many positive uh, comments. Last year, there were many patrols. Again, there were many co positive comments from the citizens that they enjoyed seeing the people out um, it, with this initiative. This appears to be raising its ugly head again. The Burford Councillor has requested um, or has inquired whether there will be additional patrols because he's here in concern. the impact the ATV activity is having on the local citizens, farmers, and the safety issues and, and costs of the, the local people. Uh, these farmers that I have spoken to are predominantly in the Burford area, but I'm aware that this is not just a Burford area problem, that it is countywide. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, I know that you obviously are because you're being proactive, but there are, there are significant concerns out there. Mayor Bailey, did you uh, want to add to that? Oh, you're on mute. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, through you, Madam Chair, to, to piggyback on that, saying that we have it in St. George too, very, uh, quite a lot. And my concern is the personalities of the farmers because they are very tolerant for a very long time. Um, and they also are very good at shooting, um, shooting warning shots and things in the air. And, I'm always afraid that ricochets and accidental harm to people um, to prove a point uh, can, can go very badly very quickly. So I, I know how frustrated they are in St. George here. And it always seems to be the same points of entry in these few farmers fields. But the, the amount of damage they could do, even getting in and then trying quickly to get back out when caught. And then, as I said, when the farmers show their frustration by, by shooting into the air or across from them or behind them or beside them. I'm just afraid something's going to happen too, by accident, of course, but someone's gonna get hurt and it's, it's getting with COVID. People are wound so tight, um, never tighter have they been wound as right now. And I'm just, I'm just afraid for what could happen. So, um, and know that, know that it's happening everywhere in the county. Just a question on what is actually <clears throat> uh, legal or allowed in terms of ATV use. I mean, I live out in the country as well, and there's quite a bit of activity, but I just assume it's part of, you know, we don't experience that level. And I'm assuming that maybe it's worse in these um, town centers because there's people in town that have this equipment and then are using it outside of town because there's nowhere to use it in town. Um, but out in the countryside, you see farmers using them, you see children of farmers going to jobs and going to milk cows and, you know, it's, it's quite a regular uh, site in the hamlet of Harley, but we don't experience this, this type of issue. So is that, is that allowed or is that not allowed and it's just kind of happening and they're not really abusing uh, their neighbor's property? I don't know who wants to stick handle that question for member Rahay. The county does not have a bylaw permitting the use of ATVs. Um, they are not permitted on the road. Um, it does happen all across Ontario, as Jim referenced, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture 
This is a huge issue for farmers all across Ontario and the damage is Mayor Bailey and Member Brown said is substantial to the to the fields and to the crops. Um, but I, I be in terms of Staff Sergeant Hanson, you're the expert on on the uh, legalities of all that. Would you be able to answer that for Member Verhey? Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, to sum it up, um, Madam Chair, you you hit that nail right on the head. Uh, they're completely illegal to operate in the county. Uh, the only times that they can be operated is on private property with permission or while actually engaged in a farming practice. Um, simply having a slow moving uh, vehicle on it and going for a rip up and down the road does not constitute a, uh, a farming practice so they wouldn't be permitted either. So essentially anyone that you see on an all-terrain vehicle, dirt bike, uh, side by side, uh, they're operating it in contravention of the law unless it's for a specific farming purpose. Uh, hopefully that uh, satisfies you, Mr. Verhey. Member Brown. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to uh, Acting Staff Hampson. Um, in your report or in the report, it indicated that six charges were recently laid against those during off-road enforcement. What sort of charges would have been laid against them? Uh, the charges relate uh, to trespassing for those ones as they were found in specific uh, private property without permission. Uh, that being uh, the ones on this report were in the area of Onondaga and St. George. Uh, the most recent ones that we've done were in the area of the Paris Dump and uh, Barker's Bush. Uh, if we do observe them on the roadway, there's a number, or even on private property, there's a number of different violations. Uh, related to licensing, license plates, insurance, helmets, safety equipment, uh, improper tires, uh, improper seating arrangements, um, the charges that can be laid. There's there's quite a few that can be laid. Um, so the uh, the ones that are reported there, I believe they were all in relation to uh, to trespassing. What just to follow up, uh, what what sort of consequences? Is it a fine? Is it a court appearance? What what happens with those charges? Uh, it's similar to the Highway Traffic Act. Uh, if we're charging under the uh, Trespass to Property Act, it's a, a $65 fine. If we go under the Off-Road Vehicles Act, you're looking at closer to $110 for trespassing. Um, certainly, if we uh, observe them causing damage to private property or out in a growing crop, we'll be looking at criminal charges of mischief. Um, and as with anything under the Provincial Offenses Act, it can result in a simple issuance of a part one offense notice, which is your standard ticket, or we can summon some of the court with a part three and ask for an increased penalty to the maximum of the, uh, the statute. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. Just to follow up on that one to uh, Acting Inspector uh, Hampson there. Um, so are you charging everyone you find or are you still trying to educate them with warnings? Uh, certainly, uh, education is part of our uh, proactive that we're taking when we are out there on our machines. Uh, we're in an enforcement capacity at that time. Any other discussion on the ATV issue that continues to plague us, I guess, in terms of the challenges that it presents? I guess uh, keep up keep up the uh, what we're hearing and and what we are suggesting is keep up the good work, keep up the the vigilance on on those areas, those rural areas. That would be great. Um, any other questions for Inspector Nash or or uh, yep, Councillor Pierce? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you um, to Inspector Nash uh, with the report. Thank you for the report. Just a couple of quick questions on it. As far as the um, the youth and school resource officer. Um, I know you stated that, um, that she's doing some online training and online courses and such, which is fantastic. I, I'm just curious, the, the number of hours that, uh, that she would normally, or a resource officer would normally be spending uh, within the school system, now that they're closed, um, are they, is, is the same number of hours being spent online or what other duties is she backfilling in the spare time? So through you, Madam Chair, with the, with the shutdown, um, there was a bit of a slow uptake with the virtual learning. 
So it was a matter of getting that information together, getting that virtual training together and reaching out to her counterparts across the province in order to better prepare and deliver that information. So now that she actually is delivering the, these programs through a virtual forum, the number of hours will match. So the time she would spend in school, she's spending online. So I believe there's three schools she's presenting to this week. So it's the same, same timeline, same duration. Uh, prior to that, it was she was spending time getting that information. She's still responding to those occurrences where youth are involved, be it loitering or whatnot. Um, I haven't heard, I don't recall any recent calls, but she's still assisting with those calls for service. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, on page, what is it here, 21 of our package um, in regards to the incidents, um, I'm not sure if you if you'd have this information right on hand, but on April the April the 20, uh, what is it here, April the 4th, there was a traffic stop for unnecessary noise on Paris roads, uh, leaves a driver charged with uh, a novice driver without qualified accompanying person. Um, there was the, the, the noise part. Do we know was that, was that uh, a loud muffler or squealing tires? I'm just trying to, um, to put the connection together um, for the public in the sense that we are looking into uh, the loud vehicles. And just on a side note of that, I, I have been in contact with uh, um, Acting Sergeant uh, Wortman on that. So uh, uh, Mr. Hampson, I appreciate the setting us together there. And we're going to continue on discussions because I will be involved with that going forward. But I'm just curious, um, was, that a, was that a muffler, a loud muffler? Are you aware? Madam Chair, through you, this, on this occasion was actually squealing tires. So we will continue to look for, listen for loud mufflers, squealing tires, uh, th that type of conduct, and we will initiate vehicle stops. And the action that's taken at that time would depend on obviously officer discretion and the situation. Right, thank you for that. Um, I did have a question on the ATV and I appreciate the conversation we had on that, that answered that. Um, just for, for folks that are listening here, when we're, when we're talking about patrol hours and foot patrol and, and uh, uh, car patrol and stuff like that. Obviously, it's broken down into North, West, Paris, and East. I'm just wondering, can you just confirm and, and just reiterate to folks out there, um, when you say North, where where does that encompass? When you say West, where does that encompass? I'm just wondering if you could just, just quickly review that for the folks that are listening there, just so they understand when they see North, East, West, what we're talking about here. Sorry, um, yeah, the uh, z north zone is uh, zone number one for us, and that encompasses uh, St. George, Harrisburg, Glen Morris area. Uh, zone two is Paris, which encompasses Paris itself proper. Zone three is everything uh, Mount Pleasant, uh, sorry, west of Mount Pleasant, encompassing uh, Burford, Harley, and uh, zone four, or, or the east zone, is Mount Pleasant, Canesville, Onondaga areas. Okay. I appreciate that. I've had a couple questions as that's great, but what does North mean? And I just wanted to confirm what that I was giving accurate information and, and I appreciate that. Um, other than that, uh, again, thank you for the report and uh, thanks for what you do. Uh, one quick question, I guess, uh, Inspector Nash, you mentioned about reviewing the communications plan. At some point, we, um, uh, I know I would be interested in, in understanding uh, the different points of communication that um, PC Vitalis and the detachment we're working on. And as a as a police service board, we prioritize communications within the community as well uh, in terms of proactive communications. So how we can dovetail that? Um, Inspector Darling had a couple of ideas that they used up at, at her detachment in Peterborough that maybe might be worth uh, us considering as the police services board. So I just uh, would be interested at some point just to connect with you um, so that we can see if there's a, an opportunity to uh, dovetail. Our, our strategic objective along with what with what you folks are doing operationally as well. Yeah, for sure, Madam Chair. I'll know better after I have a sit down with Conrad and Acting Staff Hampson to have that conversation. That's great. And then just to circle back, uh, I know it probably should have come under business arising from the minutes, but um, thanks to uh, Staff Sergeant Hampson and Robin at the county for uh, closing the loop on the uh, extended service office down in Onondaga and I believe uh, Andrew you have keys now 
Uh, yes, we are up and operational. That's great to hear. So that's check that off the list. We're good. Um, and I believe uh, what um, Robin's done as well is she circled back with uh, county staff so that the new build uh, for Canesville will have um, facilities incorporated in the design as well as they move forward proactively. So that's great too. And we're happy to see that you have a spot now within the community to be able to use that space. So that's, that's um, great news. I'm glad to see that resolved. Any other questions or comments on the um, inspector's reports? And the uh, the 911 calls are interesting. It'd be interesting to see how that moves forward because for the longest time they were down quite a bit with um, the way OPP triaged them centrally. And so now that we're seeing an upward trend, um, that will be interesting for us to monitor in terms of responses and, and issues that are being raised as a result of those 911 calls. Um, because that's a that's a reversal of trends, I guess. Any other any other questions or comments before we move on? Thank you, Inspector Nash. Uh, in our report, um, we also have the false alarms summary on page 37, 38. Gosh, there's so many pages here today. 37. Um, you can see what's happened so far, and as well, Inspector Nash uh, commented that alarm calls have been down. Uh, they they have they do continue to issue warnings uh, to various people, uh, but I'm not sure that there's any more discussion required on the report that we received. Seeing none, uh, so at this time we will need a motion to um, accept both. Uh, Inspector Nash's detachment commander's report, the statistics, and the false alarm summary to be received for information. Member Brown, seconded by Member Verhey, and all those in favor. That's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, so under communications, we have three items um, for information. The first item on page 39 is a summary of our um, property count for the municipal billing statements for 2022. Uh, so they've given us a count based on MPAC data uh, and that will reflect in our billing model moving forward. Um, and, uh, and then they, as usual, they, they reconcile as needed. Is there any discussion needed on this topic or? Uh, okay, seeing none. Page, uh, starting on page 41 of our package, and there's quite a lot there, uh, but, um, and I'll just be able, to, I'll speak really quickly and then I'll open the floor for this one. I, Cause I kind of got involved in this one a little bit uh, with Inspector Darling before she wrapped up her time. So um, Councillor Gatward sent me this package that you see. Uh, she was sent a letter indicating that it was a, uh, the project, the, 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 the funding was being terminated. I think they had her on file as the previous chair. Uh, so she forwarded it to me. And of course, I, I didn't find anything to say that anything was being, I, I've signed interim reports. And I know that there's been some challenges with um, COVID and being able to spend all of the money that originally was applied for in the appropriate streams. And there's a provincial stream and a local stream and the funding programs for these community safety um, uh, partnerships has been has been uh, challenging to figure out but uh, nonetheless um, uh, there was some communication back and forth that something was being cancelled and there was some discrepancy with the county I had an email from uh, the county Heather Mifflin from the county in, in regards to funds that they've received but haven't got any allocated expenses against um, so it, long story short inspector darling made made a couple of inquiries and was able to um, communicate with, with the uh, Solicitor General's office to not terminate the contract as of yet until everybody had had a chance to look at the file. Uh, there's been different people working on this with changes to the resource officers and the mental health workers and everything else. So there's been different people submitting reports. Uh, so Inspector Darling, the understanding that I have is that Inspector Darling was able to get an agreement that nothing's been canceled at this time. 
they've updated the contact information. Uh, should, once we review things, um, there need to be something modified, canceled, changed, whatever, um, then we can reevaluate. But then we also have to reconcile with monies that the county has received uh, and whether that has to be returned or not returned. So um, I believe Inspector Nash, she was gonna pass that file to you. I know you've got many to transition, uh, but at some point we, we will need to figure out what the status of this, this specific project is and what needs to be updated or not. And that's kind of the quick and easy. I'm not sure if anybody, Inspector Nash or anybody else wants to add into that before we open that up for any discussion. Yeah, Inspector Nash. So Madam Chair, I was able to locate uh, documentation on that specific grant. Uh, we are entering our final year. Actually, we're into the final year three of that particular grant. And there were some line items identified as far as uh, costs. And that's something I'll have to sit down with uh, acting staff Hampson and the community well-being team to see how it is that we can best use those funds if it is the intent to uh, continue on with that grant. So I'll need a bit of time to review it with the team. Figured as much. Uh, and I appreciate that Inspector Darling was able to reach out to, to her colleagues in the Solicitor General's office to kind of stall that. And I did speak with Councillor Gatward and explain the process and what had happened. So I think, I think for now we're, until Inspector Nash and, and his team is able to look at the project and understand everything, I think we're in a, in a hold pattern until, until further notice, if that makes sense for everybody. Okay. Um, and then the last piece on page 77 is an update from the uh, OAPSB regarding um, our discussions about police service board compositions and when they might be coming into force. Um, so there was some details in there about timelines and, and expectations um, in terms of um, our section 10 board and how they'll be coming into, uh, it could be any time in 2022, 2021. It, it seems like there's, it, it will depend on what the, the government's able to do in terms of passing the legislation and, and, and whatnot. And I believe our recommendation is going tonight to the administration committee uh, so that it then can go and be submitted in time for the June 7th, I think believe is what Robin had said. Councillor Pierce. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So just uh, just to back up to the previous era in regards to that grant, um, oh, yeah. can you just confirm for me, I, and, and I believe, um, is this being able to be used for like MCERT and COAST? Like, is that kind of what we can use that, some of that grant money for? Can you confirm that, Inspector? Yeah, so through you, Madam Chair, so there's two grants. There exists the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan with expansion of mental health incident response in Brant County. And that's, your, that's the COAST, the MSERP program. Uh, the other one is specific to enhance police response to victims of sexual violence through training partnerships and increase accessibility. Unfortunately, with the grant, the monies are awarded or given specific to the, uh, the demonstrated or the criteria that's in the grant. And you cannot reallocate that money for for anything else. It's either for that purpose or you basically relinquish that those funds. Okay, thank you. And we've had other grants for ride, the RIDE program, uh, the creation of the Community Safety Wellbeing Plan, uh, some of those things. So it's, uh, there's, there's many different funding files that uh, these, that to keep track of. Okay, so item 8.3, just to confirm, everybody's received that as well and has an understanding of the timelines for that. Um, any other discussion on any of these uh, communication pieces? Questions, comments? Uh, so if, if you desire, we can approve these for um, information, accept them for information together, or we can do them individually. Mayor Bailey? We can do them together, I think. Okay, is that a motion, sir? Yes, sir, ma'am. Okay, so a seconder for that? May, uh, sorry, Councillor Pierce, I was so distracted. Uh, 
All those in favor of receiving the three pieces for information? And that's carried, thank you. Okay, moving into other business. Uh, we have a couple of pieces here. Um, we have, uh, I believe we had uh, um, a request to Mayor Bailey uh, and, and that was received about wondering what the status of uh, a Paris extended office was going to be. And um, if you're seeing some of the tech, tech thing, I think they're having some challenges today with IT. So there's nobody new joining us. It's just, I think they're trying to figure out IT stuff. Uh, so uh, Mayor Bailey, I'm not sure if you wanna to speak to the request that you received. Um, I don't believe it's in our package. Um, but it was um, an email that you had received that you had forwarded to me as well. I don't know, you probably get so many emails, you probably don't even. I, I, I do remember the email, but I think I, I did forward it to you. I think it's your business to bring it forward. Okay, so um, the request was uh, from, from uh, and I apologize, I thought it would be, I believe we sent it out by email, but if it was not in the package, I apologize. Count, former Councillor Hegarty was wondering what the status of uh the extended service office might be for Paris. He believes there should be an office of some kind in Paris now that the detachment has moved out of um, Mechanic Street and out onto uh, Rest Acres. He feels that there should be some type of police presence in Paris being that Paris is the largest population volume of the county that it would be good for Paris to have that exposure I know we have uh, talked briefly in the past about the extended service office, but uh, in order to help inform the response to him, I just would like some discussion here uh, in terms of um, everybody's thoughts. Mayor Bailey? Well, it's, it's come to, through you, Madam Chair, it's come to council um, many times, and we've always been very supportive that it needs to be a presence somewhere uh, downtown just because so many people don't know about a new OPP station. They just expect a town the size of Paris to have an OPP or a police uh, department or, or some sort of a venue to go to if something went wrong or if they needed information. So with all the building that's gonna be going on uh, in behind uh, uh, the, the, uh, the main street, there could be something put into that as one of our new builds. There are certainly a few empty stores right now on the main drag. Uh, so there will be a presence. Uh, we don't know what that presence is gonna look like yet um, because it might just be a, an OPP sign on, a, uh, on an arm that, that attracts people to it. And then when you get there at the, the button to push or an intercom or a phone number or something saying that an officer can be with you or you can speak through an intercom Speak to somebody at the detachment. We don't. We don't really know what that's going to look like, but I think council is very much in support of something being somewhere uh, in the downtown of Paris, just because of the the, the size of, of the of the town. So really, we don't know what it looks like. We we should be working on it maybe a little bit quicker than we are, but with COVID and everything, there are people coming in, going out of stores. People are seeing if they can hang on one more month, two more months, and uh, I think there'll be some people leaving. The downtown area and maybe their storefronts will come available and I think we do have some COVID funding to maybe support the rent uh, for the front of a store or a storefront of some sort. Um, I don't know Councillor Pierce as a member of council you can maybe speak up too and say how you feel about it that's that's how I feel about it it just makes sense to me that we would have one. Well, through you, Madam Chair, I think you, you nailed it, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there's been many discussions, and as you say, we're all on board with having some sort of presence in the downtown core, for sure. So then, um, Inspector Nash uh, uh, or, or Staff Sergeant Hampson, how does that, uh, I know we've talked about this in the past, and there hasn't been uh, an expressive desire for, for the need. And, Similar to the need of why we have an extended service office in Onondaga in terms of uh, the distance traveling back and forth and the, the need for the office and, and, and those types of things. The need here is, in my view, uh, my understanding is probably different. Uh, is there a need from the OPP's perspective for, a, for that type of office in downtown Paris as well in, in terms of that satellite office? So 
So Madam Chair, through you, I mean, as far as uh, a need for access to facilities or telecommunications or computer communications, that need is not necessarily there. However, with respect to the desire for an ESO in the town of Paris, uh, certainly given the, the population and the need for that presence, that is something we would certainly entertain and, and work with the county on uh, to ensure that we do have, be it a storefront or, or whatever that does look like and look to ensure that there is a presence there. Mayor Bailey? Yeah, and again, uh, through you, Madam Chair, we, we never ever thought that it needed to be an officer sitting inside of a, a storefront all day long. That's, that was never our intention. It was just something that was visible even to kids. If they ran into any trouble downtown, they could run to wherever they saw the OPP uh, shingle hanging out. And whether it's an intercom, which I think is the best thing instead of a button just to push, I think an intercom that they could push and it would be answered by, by you people at the detachment. Just like the old detachment, when you came into the first set of doors, you pushed an intercom and someone magically appeared, a voice appeared from behind a, uh, a screen and you knew somebody was there. And they people wouldn't know that there wasn't somebody sitting in there. They would just know that it wasn't a recorded anything. It was a, a person's voice. And I think even kids would feel better about going and pushing that intercom uh, knowing it wasn't recorded and, and not knowing it wasn't just a phone number to phone. Member Verhey. Thank you, through the Madam Chair. I I uh, I wasn't personally a big fan of the, an ESO office, but I didn't really think of. Uh, I like where the mayor was going with having something, some sort of presence, but that sounds very economical and efficient. Good use of. Uh, of time, I, I spoke to, I think some, a few of us spoke to a couple of different constables in 2019 uh, when this was all, when construction was sort of on the go and they didn't sound super excited to have to feel obligated to sit behind a desk as that took them away from other important tasks. So I like how this has transitioned into uh, something that I think will accommodate uh, the community as well as um, have our, our frontline officers, you know, happy uh, with that. So. I like that. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, um, you know, a couple of years ago, before COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID, pre-COVID, we we talked about this with the construction and and you know the idea of the traditional ESO office wasn't necessarily something that was high on the list. But in terms of the police presence, especially during COVID and the and the assurances it provides the community, um, the calming effect or the uh, the um, you know, how it makes the community feel. I can see where Mayor Bailey and Councillor Pierce is coming from. So if there's some kind of a hybrid opportunity that we can look at that would provide that that presence in, a, in an efficient way, but not necessarily in that traditional ESO kind of manner, I think that's, uh, I think Mayor Bailey, that's where you're going. I think that makes sense as well, especially, you know, moving forward with the growth and, and with the demand that we're seeing from the community, we need to be responsive to the community's um, wishes and needs as well, if that will make them feel uh, safer and, and assured. So I, I do think we have to listen to that. Councillor Pierce. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. And, and absolutely, just to reiterate uh, what the mayor was saying there, it's it's definitely not a, you know, um, an office to have a, a full-time constable in there. I look at it the same as, you know, you look at the, um, the ESO we have in, in Burford and the latest in Onondaga and stuff like that. It's, you know, uh, for those two, it, it's one of those, you know, if you have somebody in Burford that you're, that you're meeting or in Onondaga that you're meeting, it, it might make it easier for, um, you know, the, uh, to have a, an interview or, or a conversation with a constable and just somewhere for them, you know, to go and do notes or something like that after, you know, when they're, when they're on shift and that sort of thing. So absolutely uh, not a, not a full-time presence, but, you know, just somewhere that, uh, you know, has been stated here, somewhere that the, the community knows that you know if if they need assistance they can just they're it's right downtown and they don't necessarily need to you know to go out to the new station there because you know if we if we think back of history and i know things change but there's always been a police presence whether it was the opp or back in the day of the paris police the presence has always been in the downtown core so i think if we were to continue that off with um you know just a maybe a you know a daily when they're doing their walkthroughs and stuff like that i think that's uh, that's the direction to go but absolutely not uh, not for a full-time staff mayor bailey and lastly madam chair maybe you could give a direction or uh, see if nancy could take that back to staff 
to talk to staff and see what's available now that we might be in, in, in control of. Uh, I know that uh, we're in the middle of, we're going to be doing the public washrooms downtown, but there's no space for it there. It's just going to be, we've had to squeeze a couple of public washrooms into a space um, that has no more room to squeeze anything else into. So maybe it's a piece of property or a storefront that we all already have control of, or Marty, maybe with all your connections too, you might know of a space. Uh, then we could talk to Michael and, and, and staff about uh, where that little storefront could be. But I think for a lost child to bring them into an OPP uh, signed area would be a good idea instead of just having them brought into a store. And I think people sometimes pass out uh, too much sun, too much whatever. It's a good place to go. And as, uh, as Councillor Pierce said, for finishing off some paperwork or, or seeing someone you know, just to write down numbers and just a place to be for the officers that are patrolling downtown. I think they'll find it very convenient, I, I would. So, uh, but maybe if you could see if Nancy could take that back to staff for us, uh, Madam Chair. Actually, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bailey. Um, if, if okay with you, I will follow up with, uh, Robin and I will follow up on that, I believe. Um, Robin's been very helpful with the with the Amandega stuff. So I think uh, whether it's Nancy or Robin, we'll, I'll connect with staff and um, we'll see what we can, uh, yeah, it, it'll be up to the county to, to figure out and to facilitate, but certainly it sounds like there's support here from the police service board and from OPP as well in terms of the principles behind um, what we're trying to achieve here in terms of the outreach to the community. So um, things have changed uh, and that's good. And you know we have a new way of looking at it in terms of what this office would look like. So that's great. Any other discussion on this nine, item 9.1? Okay, item 9.2, Member Brown, uh, you uh, wanted to add this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Approximately 20 months ago, we discussed the possibility of having the OPP monthly report modified so that it would streamline the content, make it easier for the OPP detachment commander, and provide greater clarity and accountability in a much simpler manner. At that point, we were advised that the OPP headquarters was currently reviewing the monthly reports that were provided to police services boards and that we would be advised when the new for report was ready and it would be provided to us. In recent months, there have been several times where information provided may not have been clear as it could have been or it was misunderstood. This information or this further supports the need for the report to provide the information that we have been asking for in a very clear and concise manner. To that end, I've had discussions with the chair and Inspector Nash and have discussed the need for this information that could be presented to the Police Services Board in camera on a monthly basis. Um, Nancy, can you share the screen for me with, um, I, I put together a very simple chart just to give us some idea for discussion purposes of what we're looking for. So this is a very basic, it's like an accounting ledger with credits and debits. One column would have the total number of positions and the times or the monthly hours, which for a 30 day uh, month would be 9166 9, hours. This would have to be adjusted up and down depending on the month, number of days in a month. The other column would have a breakdown of the various categories. And this would be further refined with input from Inspector Nash and the Police Services Board as we move forward. <clears throat> in this column, the hours should add up to the total hours so column C should equal column D, and it would ensure that the Police Services Board is provided with an accurate accounting. Inspector Nash advises that he has provided this type of information to Police Services Boards in the past, and would like to further discuss this over the next month and then bring back a proposed format to the board for their discussion and further, or for their consideration and further discussion at the June meeting. Inspector Nash brings with him a wealth of knowledge and the experience that this board may be able to benefit from. 
and I would welcome any input that he has that would improve the report to the benefit of all stakeholders. Uh, Inspector Nash, would you like to comment on this? You can take that off the screen, please, Nancy. Madam Chair, through you, um, as I've discussed, I'm open to uh, conversation around the reporting. I wanna ensure that the police service board and the community gets the information that they're looking for to ensure you have an informed uh, perspective on the situation and the service delivery you're receiving in the county. So I'm certainly open to that conversation. Obviously, when we speak about number of hours and where people are currently deployed, Certainly an in-camera form is an ideal situation for that, um, you know, given that exposes those absences and people who are on some comments and incoming and outgoing. We certainly don't want to mislead some of the uh, people with that information as well. So I certainly welcome the discussion. I, I, I look to the board for, uh, for some direction and uh, open to the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thoughts, comments, questions with Member Brown's suggestion? Um, Member Brown? Madam Chair, if it's, uh, I would like the opportunity, uh, support from the board to uh, have further conversations with Inspector Nash over the next month and just see if we can't come up with something that's a little bit more polished than the, the basic one that we have and benefit from his experience. And that we bring this back for uh, uh, open discussion at our next meeting. Mayor Bailey. Through you, Madam Chair, as long as the inspector doesn't think that this board is encroaching on the uh, the operations of the OPP, if, if, if you find that we're creeping too close to an operational piece that we're not to, we're not to step over, you'll, you'll let um, Mr. Brown know that and uh, We'll go forward from there. I would think. I don't. I don't know that uh, we've ever charted uh, your hours. Um, may, maybe it's our business to know your hours. Maybe because they're so fluid that you can't possibly uh, expect the chart to be current. But um, it, it's worth a try, I guess. If, 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 if Member Brown thinks it's uh, going to be important, then I think we could try. But you know, if we if we step too close to the line of operations, uh, Mr. Nash, I hope. You'll let us know before you let anyone else know. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Member Brown. So certainly I'll have to consult and have further conversation with our municipal policing bureau. Um, you know, we don't want a mistake in number of hours for billing. That's not that's not the situation here. Uh, it's a matter I understand the intent behind it, which is to better understand, you know, vacancies, people actually working on the road versus, you know, vacancies with a name, but they're not yet deployed to detachment, you know, especially when it comes to what service delivery we're getting from those members. Are they out on patrol? Are they doing something else? And I look at it as a check and balance and I, I don't see any issues. Certainly that has to be done in camera. Um, and you know, certainly shared with the board, we can have conversation about that. But I think as we go along, we can further refine that report and come up with something that, that works for everyone. Thanks, Inspector Nash. I know um, just for myself, just trying to understand the vacancies has been a a, a journey since, since being appointed to the Police Service Board, just trying to understand uh, we have this person in vacant, but they're not coming for six months, so they're still really vacant. That position's still really vacant, but yeah, just understanding it all would be very helpful as an education for myself as well. Um, so I have Councillor Pierce and then Member Verhey uh, in in order here. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, absolutely, and, and I think everybody understands, Inspector, the fact that there's you know there's the the fine line between public information and in camera information, and 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 that's totally cool. I think the biggest thing is, and I've been saying, um, you know, since since my time on council, really, it, it, it's a, it's more to do with the, the context of the of the reports. It's you know, the information is there, but to the public, the the information that goes to the public when they see something, sometimes it's just a number. So you know, having that number with a little bit of context behind it, and and as far as you know, if we want to look at it as you know, boots on the ground as opposed to 
you know, not boots on the ground as far as staffing. And, and I think that would go a long way, but absolutely understand the fact that, uh, uh, that you would have to have conversations with the, the, the policing board and, and all that kind of stuff. And there's some information that should not be public. So, and I totally understand that as well, but I look forward to seeing the results of those conversations and I'm, I'm in favor of the conversations being had. Thank you. Member this, uh, this kind of touches on a point that I was saving to bring up as a follow-up from last meeting. I maybe should have uh, included it in uh, follow-up from previous, uh, previous meeting minutes. Um, and I apologize if it was brought up and I snuck out for two seconds there. Uh, we had talked about with, uh, we talked a little bit about this concept with Inspector Darling and I had requested if we could have some sort of visual org structure um, that just becomes maybe part of the, the, the attachment can commander's report or something like that. It doesn't need to give us specific names of individuals, uh, but just the positions as it is per our billing model. And then, um, you know, the, the, the inspector or um, Sergeant Hampson can just let us know which one of those are vacant and who's been, you know, because I find that it's changing every month and it's, it seems to be a game of chess and trying to understand it is difficult. But I think if we had a full picture of what we're quote unquote entitled to as a, as a municipality, um, and then just a quick overview of that every meeting to say, hey, this, uh, these two have dropped off or gone away and these few are coming. Um, I don't know if that, if that uh, is in line with what uh, Member Brown was wanting, but uh, if it isn't, then I think that would be a nice thing to have. And uh, we, we, we have been asking for that and, and Inspector Darling did say that was something that could be uh, provided, but uh, I'm not sure, Inspector Nash, if that is something uh, that you're familiar with or have done or able to do. And Marty, it sounds like it's, to, to me, it sounds like it's two different, like what uh, Member Brown's asking for and you, and what you're asking for are complementary, but two different pieces of information, the org chart versus the uh, the other chart that uh, Member Brown's talking about. Inspector Nash, did you want to comment on that? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So I did receive a draft org chart it needs some updating since the last time it was done which is a couple of weeks ago but we do have something i'll review it and if we can we will certainly provide that uh, in camera next meeting great thank you even uh you know just as an example even just understanding uh the community resource media officer went from two people to three people and and various reasons like so it's just understanding who does not the people the names just the positions i think is what member verde is is referring to correct sorry yes three madam chair that that's uh that's that's correct as well as just understanding the numbers a little bit better okay so i think originally if, if there's one of the things outstanding here is member brown asked for some direction to continue to pursue the development of this chart um is everybody in support of that um with with the direction okay we all agree to give give member brown the direction to continue drafting that and then uh of course inspector nash respecting the fact that that would would need to be an in-camera discussion in terms of um uh, how that would flow out and how that would be discussed mayor bailey did you want to add a comment to that I just didn't know whether you wanted to have a motion made and I was prepared to make the motion. Sure, let's, let's, let's make a motion so that we can record the decision. Um, yep. Sure, great, thank you. So the motion will be to direct Jim, um, Member Brown and Inspector Nash to further discuss and refine and bring back to the next meeting. Uh, this, uh, this idea of a, uh, what are we calling this? Um, some kind of chart. Reporting structure. Rep yeah, the org chart report is different than maybe the member Brown. What are you calling it? OPP reporting format. Okay, which is different than the detachment commander's report, which is different than the. We just want to make sure we're all talking the same thing. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Member Verhey, and I hope Nancy, you got all that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, please. That's carried. Thanks, Jim, for taking that on. Um, okay, we will move into number 10. We have some updates. Councillor Pierce, anything from Council you'd like to share? Uh, thanks, Madam Chair, through you. Um, just again, um, I, I've been in discussion, well, not full discussions yet with uh, 
uh, with uh, Acting um, Sergeant uh, Wortman over the Brand Safe Streets and loud mufflers and speeding and that sort of thing. So that is ongoing. Um, just a reminder out there that, uh, you know, as council, we, we get, uh, uh, I would suggest weekly, if not daily, uh, emails and such regarding the, the loud mufflers and the speeding and the noise going through town. Um, so just, uh, you know, for those that are listening, uh, we are working on that. It's a, it's a difficult thing to try and stop, but uh, we are working through ideas and plans through Brant Safe Streets and in cooperation with the OPP to try and track down on that the best we can. Mayor Bailey? A question through you, Madam Chair, to, doesn't matter who, um, the inspector. Is it, this isn't localized. All these crazy mufflers and things aren't local. Are, this is like what happened everywhere, right? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. So with respect to loud mufflers, squealing tires, I mean, it tends to be trends. It, it does occur elsewhere. It's not just in the County of Brant. And not that we're seeing an increase, it's just, it goes with trends and we are seeing it or people are paying more attention to it now. And that's what we're hearing about it. And it's something we will, you know, for years, we curb squealing tires, we'll address them, loud mufflers. It's something that is ongoing. Mayor Bailey? Yeah, I, I, just don't re I just don't remember ever having to not have my windows in my house open at night to sleep before now. And and um, I, I I find that it's just all night long and it's, it's um, I didn't know whether these are customized kits that, that people are buying for their trucks and their cars, whether it's aftermarket um, something that they're putting on these things. I mean, it used to be a bad muffler would get you a ticket. Now it just seems like everyone's got a bad muffler. And I, I just haven't, I haven't uh, noticed it as much as I have in the last year or so. Uh, and I just was hoping that it was everywhere and not just uh, the, the County of Brant uprising on me. So the, the lack of respect that people show for other people is sometimes uh, unnerving, whether it's, whether it's modified mufflers and motorcycle mufflers and car mufflers, uh, maybe it sounds good to them, but to the, to the vast majority of people, it does not sound pleasing to the ear. So, you know, hopefully, I, hopefully there's something more we can do about it. Cause you're right, uh, Mayor Bailey, it's not just in Paris, it's, it's everywhere that we're hearing these concerns and, and, and hearing the noise. Councillor Pierce? Yeah, uh, thanks, Madam Chair, through you. And, and as was alluded to earlier there, I think it's it's kind of magnifying things because people are home with COVID and they're, you know, they're because we can't go anywhere per se, people are out in their yards and that sort of thing. And, and it, it's, it's becoming more, um, they're more aware of it. So uh, again, but we are, we are working on it and uh, we're in, in team with the OPP to, to try and do what we can. Great. Good question for you, Councillor Pierce. Um, out in my neck of the woods here, I've had quite a few questions lately about what I suspect is the city of Hamilton, but there's been questions about the county's move to um, photo uh, radar in community mm -hmm. safety zones. And I guess there is something going up in Troy to alert people to red light cameras, which there is no red lights out there, but uh, on westbound traffic. So people are assuming this is a county initiative uh, that is out, which is not the county of Brant and Troy, but uh, they assume that there is going to be something that the county is installing on Highway 5 westbound coming into the county. And I didn't know if there was anything we wanted to clarify there. Uh, to my knowledge, there's been no spots that have been deemed for anything of yet. Uh, there will be signs coming into the community that state, that, you know, you, there is photo radar in the community. Um, that's all that that has to be done as part as part of having photo radar, but there's nothing to my knowledge that is coming westbound on Highway 5 through Troy. So it's possibly a city of Hamilton initiative. For well, it would be because they're yeah. Yeah, I think they, they the, the border is just just on this side of Troy. So Harrisburg Road there. Yeah. Um, with this with the photo radar initiative, is there a timeline on when uh, I don't know if this is a Robin question or or whomever, but um, will this help us with Grand River Street North and 
with Paris High School being a community potential community safety zone, uh, will this help us with some of the concerns and complaints that we're receiving? And if what what's the projected timeline for some of that type of work? And Robin, I see you joined us. Thank you. No problem through you, Madam Chair. Um, we just got approval to enter into the contracts. And once we enter into those contracts, there's a 90 day bead time. Um, so it's probably going to be about six months. Great. Thank you, Robin. Okay, any other council updates, uh, Councilor Pierce? Nope, not unless anybody has anything for me to take back. Hearing none right now. Um, Member Verhey, is there any zone four updates that you'd like to provide? Uh, just two, two quick things. Uh, we set the meeting, the next meeting for June 2nd, so that's forthcoming um, on a Wednesday morning. And the second item, uh, last item I said, or last meeting, uh, as I mentioned, was a bit of a, uh, a rebalance and a recheck of, of, of everything because we hadn't been meeting for a while and there was a complete changeover in the board structure. So uh, this meeting, we're, we're feeling uh, sort of back on the right path in terms of some structure. So we're going get, to be getting some updates from the ministry, uh, uh, also from the OAPSB as well. Um, and then my second, uh, my second comment and or question is actually to, uh, to everybody as, as, as a board, is there anything that you would like me to bring up or uh, table at this meeting? Nothing off the top of our heads, but I'm sure if there is something, um, anybody has anything, then we can always forward that to member Verhey as well by end of the month. Uh, with that, like, I'm not sure what June 2nd is your meeting. So probably in the next week or so is what you'd need the feedback by. Yes. Yeah. Anything. And, and honestly, it doesn't matter if you send it to me the night before the morning of, I, uh, I, uh, I tend to work best under pressure. So, um, that's not a strength, that's a weakness, but please, anything that comes up, um, especially, I think we'll be hearing some more about, there'll be some discussion and some questions about the board structure topic, which, which I know we're we're well well into as well, but if there's anything like that that I could take uh, to the table there, just please send it my way. Thank you. Okay, if nothing further on, on item 10.2, 10.3 is the community safety and well-being plan. Uh, on page 79 of your package, 79 to 94, uh, we had a committee meeting last week where um, some draft information was provided and timelines for the report and the draft of the plan. Uh, page 79, I'll give you the timeline. Uh, we have another committee meeting uh, next week uh, and then they are drafting all the communications and the feedback from the, from the, from the community, from the committee. Uh, it will be going to council uh, ideally June 17th for their review uh, for their June 22nd meeting. Uh, the deadline still remains July 1st to submit to the province in terms of uh, the final report. So um, staff have been working really hard to in, in behind the scenes to get all this pulled together. Um, you can see from the, the package, the, the package that's included in there, just some of the things that they'll be focusing on, uh, some of the priorities that they've um, established and uh, some of the common themes that they're going to be going through. Um, one of the things that they uh, identified in this in the survey, uh, as of course we've heard, was uh, that we knew would come up would be traffic uh, issues. And um, sorry, excuse me, uh, traffic issues. But what also came up was um, access to transportation, and so one of the feedbacks that I asked was that we separate those two. Traffic safety is one specific issue, but access to transportation services and how that impacts um, mental health, our youth, our seniors, our others in terms of the community are is a different issue. And I just didn't want to see them combine together uh, to um, just Excuse me, sorry about the phone. I don't know how to stop it from ringing. Um, uh, so anyways, I provided that feedback. I hope that makes sense. But a lot of the stuff that's coming up will be about mental health, seniors, diversity, youth, um, and um, 
that's what they're going to be putting in the draft plan. I won't go into any more detail. Uh, so in terms of starting and stopping, we finally got started again. And uh, it was good to see that we now are going to meet the deadline with actually a pretty uh, fulsome report. Uh, as our This is our first stab at this report. So it's a living document. So it'll be good to see it come into fruition and how we can then you know, see how the plan will evolve from there. I'm not sure if there's any specific questions, but uh, you have the report in your package to look at as well. Councillor Peters. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, not necessarily a question, but just a comment um, uh, in the report. I, I just, you know, I, I find it interesting that, um, you know, the, the discussion points in the report, uh, you know, like with, uh, you know, mental health and affordable housing and youth, and those are, those are, topics that council is discussing as well so it's it's interesting to 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 see that we're you know we're we're close to the heartbeat of what the the community is is feeling out there so that's good and and it's uh so it won't be anything anything new per se but it's uh it's it's good to know that we're we're talking of things in the right direction anyway for sure and 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 remember the community safety well-being plan you know that 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 uh, dartboard bullseye kind of analogy if we can if we can deal with some of these things before they become critical incidences in that red zone as a county, as police services, as OPP, then, then that leaves our police services to deal with those really critical issues. It, it, well, they're all important issues, but if we can deal with them on the, on the outside of that circle rather than on the very inside of that circle, then you know, being proactive, I think that's kind of the plan. And that's good to see that they're aligned because if they weren't aligned, there might be some challenges too, right? So Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, uh, the county staff and the people that they're working with are doing some good work here. So uh, thanks to Not them surprised. as well. For, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have any other updates to provide. It's been, I just want to say quickly, thank you to Nancy. We've had a lot of correspondence to deal with in the last few weeks. So a lot of different issues with respect to the composition of the board and, and, and different pieces to go back and forth on. I just want to say thank you. It's been a busy uh, time, uh, but uh, good to see that we're on top of things and trying to be proactive on everything. We do have, unless there's anything else under updates, I don't believe there is um, at this time. Okay. Uh, other than 2021 priorities, I'm not sure yet when the action plan, uh, Inspector Nash, maybe you can let us know when, if, when the action plan is, maybe it already has been, but the last I heard we were waiting for approval for it to be published. And I'm just wondering if that's, um, if there's a timeline for that. Yeah, Madam Chair, I do not have uh, a timeline. I haven't seen it as of yet, but I can certainly reach out and make some inquiries. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have some in-camera items to deal with today. Um, and in order to do that, we need to do a motion uh, to go in camera. Councillor Pierce and Mayor Bailey and all those in favor. That's carried, thank you. 